here again to highlight what I can only describe as ineptitude and intransig intransigence in the special education. Starting early July of last year, my wife and I tried to engage with the CIEP office about finding our special needs son a suitable placement. We begged for a residential program because of his diagnosis of reactive attachment disorder, prohibiting him access to education, which, uh, as an aside, I implore you to Google because certainly the CIEP office has not done, though, uh, done that, um, and I'll be here to discuss any with anyone who would like. <clears throat> three months after the start of school, three months, he was finally placed in a non-public day program over our objections. We were told he didn't meet criteria for residential, despite criteria never being produced. On January 20th of this year, a snow day, Josh deregulated to new and dangerous levels we'd never seen before. That morning, he deregulated, assaulted me, and ran away from home because he can't handle transitions or even minor changes to his school schedule. It took the Maryland State Police to find him, so I could get him to the hospital and into respite placement for his safety and mine, a placement without educational service. We happened to have an IEP meeting scheduled for the following week where we provided, we were provided a form to start home and hospital instruction while he was in respite. We had a psychiatrist fill it out and submit to PDCPS, but it was denied based on a projected time of two weeks in respite, which is apparently not enough time to matter. We resubmitted the form for a longer period. It was denied based on, quote, being an inappropriate option for a child awaiting placement, end quote, despite him already being enrolled in school. We then received a third denial without an associated application because someone determined he was no longer a Maryland resident. Furthermore, his school was directed by PDCPS to cease and desist, preparing work packets for the same reason. To be clear, EGCPS blocked both possible routes for educating our special needs son while he was in respite. At our IEP meeting just last week, CIEP office said they intended to disenroll our son on the basis of attendance rather than address the elephant in the room, which is their own failure to work towards an appropriate placement. The remarkably unprepared PDCPS team absolutely refused to consider all options, including residential programs. This was a clear, dereliction of their responsibility to provide a free and appropriate public education and an act of bad faith. I want to make it clear. We have decided to pursue a private educational placement and we are requesting PDCPS pay for it. We officially notified the IEP team at our last meeting per state law and we are now notifying this body because as fiduciaries, you should know what's going on in your system. It's time this child, and so many more, receive the free and appropriate education guaranteed to them by the state of Maryland. Thank you.